Yo, what's up guys? Kai here, and welcome back to Let's Play Breath of Fire. In our last episode, Karn was kind enough to grace us with his presence as he joined our party, so let's take a look and see what he's all about. Starts at level 12, and he's a few levels behind. But being a thief type character, Karn is a little fragile, but he's really fast with 69 agility. <laughs> Giggity. And because he has no spells, he does rely on his physical attacks to deal damage to the enemies. And eventually, he will get an ability that allows him to deal crazy amounts of damage to enemies, even more than Ryu. But for right now, we don't have that ability. And before we go further into the dungeon, let's give him some of the stuff that we found on our way down here, like the Iron Shield. Defense plus 12. Sun Helmet, another 6 defense, nice. And the Dagger, plus 12 attack. Yeah, do not want to give him the Skull Hat, you want to stay away from those. Just like the Summoners. No indication whatsoever that the Skull Hats are cursed. Would have been nice game. Oh, right, I almost forgot. We also want to put Karn at the lead of the party because his party ability, as he mentioned in the last episode, is that he can pick the locks on all these doors, so we no longer have to worry about them. And that also means we finally get to go back to all of those towns and areas. Oh. Hey, hey, gold slimes. Nice. Did show off Karn here. I guess we don't have to use Thunder now that we have a fourth party member here. These guys are easy enough anyways. But yeah, like I was about to say, now we can go back to all of those towns and areas and unlock those doors that we passed up and get some really good items. It's too bad Karn can't steal items from enemies. Oh well. You know what, let's use a Marble 3. Even though we've come this far, we still have well, we have a little ways to go before we're done with our business here at Crypt. This dungeon's relatively long. Karn's other special ability while being the party leader is that he can disarm the traps and treasure boxes, like so. Unfortunately, that also means he disarms the good traps that give us an HP or AP recovery. So it is a bit of a give and take. But oh well, it's nothing I'm really concerned about. Okay, now we want to come over here. Wow, that Marble 3 didn't last very long at all. Oh well, it's still better than Sweetwaters and a godsend to anyone doing an LP. <laughs> Although we are at that point in the game where I'm probably going to cut out some more battles because it takes a long time inputting commands for four characters. Here we get the hunting clothes. It's pretty, uh, well it's not pretty good, but it is better than the suede gown that Karn has now. And it makes him a little faster, so very nice. Alright, now let's do a little bit of backtracking. And we want to come up here. I have to say, recording these episodes at night, whoops, is, it's interesting because before I moved into my new place, I would primarily do my recording in the morning or early afternoon when Lenneth and Raimi were sleeping. However, now that it's nighttime, oh yeah, you have to come down here and examine this coffin. What? No mummy? No monsters to fight? I'm disappointed, game. Well, let's try this. Oh. Wow, we're fighting these guys still? Huh. Well, whatever works for you, game. Well, let's try this coffin. Huh, this one too. Well, damn it. So basically, you just have to keep searching these coffins that are scattered all along the outside of this room until we find the book. 
But yeah, getting back to my story, now that I'm able to record some of these at nighttime, when my cats are wide awake and ready for the hunt, thanks to their feline instincts kicking in, uh, it's funny because both Leneth and Raimi are indoor cats, and there is no hunt. <laughs> Any semblance of a hunt would be completely imaginary. But that doesn't stop them from being rambunctious and running around wrestling and playing and doing whatever it is cats like to do. So if you hear any commotion or noise in the background, I apologize. It's probably them. For the most part though, they're pretty well behaved. I don't have to get the spray bottle out all that much. And even when I do, Raimi knows that the spray bottle means water. <laughs> You know, she'll wince at it, and then she'll stop whatever it is she's doing. Nice counter from Ryu. Just like critical hits, uh, if you get a counter attack using a boomerang, uh, you'll counter all the enemies on the screen, even if they didn't actually hit Ryu themselves. So the game doesn't just check for individual critical hits or counters. It's just, it's all or nothing. And I like that. I also like Nina gaining levels. Aw, oh, no new spells. It's funny though with the spray bottle, because like I was on my way to saying, Raimi, she'll wince at it and give it a really dirty look. <laughs> but then she'll just, you know, kind of scamper off and go do something else. But Leneth, no, not Leneth, she'll stand there tall and proud and just stare me down like she's daring me to spray her. <laughs> yeah, daddy's little rebel. It's as if she's saying, fuck you, I'm a cat, I do what I want. Uh, all good cat owners have to have multiple spray bottles placed strategically around the house. Yeah, we'll leave this one in here, why not? We're just about done with this place. Five? You suck, Karn. Anyways, it's a little morbid if you ask me. And why are we looking through all these caskets? That's even more disturbing. Huh, kind of reminds me of the scene from Indiana Jones and the, uh, the Last Crusade where he, he's down in that tomb under the library. You know what? In this instance, you want to have everyone go after the scorpion. Now that we have a full party, we're going to be able to do a lot more damage per round, and, well, things are going to get a little bit easier. I say that like things have been challenging thus far. <laughs> but isn't that how all RPGs work? I mean, the beginning starts out kind of crappy, but as you get more party members, it gets progressively easier. Hey, we found the book! Alright! Yeah, um, it's not the first casket you find. It's not a random casket. It's always the last casket. And it's not because you have bad luck. It's just the way it is. Um, just like in Star Tropics, you have to, well, examine or talk to everything before you can advance. So, yeah. But Karm gained confidence. Alright. Maybe now he can ask out Nina. All right, Karn, you're not so humble. Oh yeah, Ross's daughter is trapped in that safe and she's probably starving and suffocating, who knows? <laughs> okay, well, you've had your moment, so let's go. But unfortunately, we can't just warp on out of here because Nina doesn't have that spell. So we gotta walk the long way, all the way back out. So I'll just meet you outside, guys. Okay, we're back in one piece and one thing I forgot to mention about Karn is when he's in the front of your party you also don't have to worry about hidden pitfalls because he will reveal them before you fall to your death. Okay so now we could go back to Oria and check on Ross's daughter or we could go treasure hunting. Yeah, priorities right? So let's go to Windland first. I think it's about time we upgraded our earth key. It will be missed, it will be missed. 
It, unfortunately, it is that time that we move on to bigger and better things. So our first stop is here in Windland, and we want to go back down to the basement of the castle. Should probably rest up at the end too. Took a beating on the way out of crypt. Oh yeah, uh, Ryu, Karn, and Bo all gained levels while backtracking out of that dungeon as well. There we go, yeah. Why is it that these little royal treasure vaults always have good items? Kind of like the one in uh, Lufia. Ha! And here we get the Flame Rapier. Pretty good weapon for Nina, and I think Ryu can also equip it if I'm not mistaken. No, he can't. Okay, I know Ryu and Nina share some weapons, but uh, Nina will not be equipping that because if you use it as an item in battle, it deals 90 damage to a single target. It is ridiculously powerful, and that's what she's going to be doing for, I'd say, a vast majority of the remainder of the game. Yeah, talk about an upgrade though. 30 damage to all enemies to 90 damage to one enemy. So now she'll be able to do something productive during boss battles. Here we get the Broken Sword. That's a very unique item. Uh, it's a weapon for Ryu. And it's one of very few swords or weapons in the game that is Dark Elemental. But you don't want to use that for that purpose because very little known fact about the Broken Sword is that it changes the ending to the game. So just put it in your inventory, do not sell it, or put it in storage. Because what I like to do, like all good key items or special items, is just move it to the bottom, you know, out of sight, out of mind. That way you don't accidentally sell it or anything. And you just want to hang on to that um, until you beat the game. Okay, let's heal up Ryu. Oh. And now let's go to Romero. Who's calling? Unknown number? Suck my balls. If it's important, they'll leave a message. Okay, now we want to go... I think it's this house that had the little underground house. Yes. Not that there's anything particularly interesting here, but I thought I'd show this off to you guys. You know how I roll. I like to show off as much as I can in a game when I do a Let's Play. Hmm. Well, remember this for later, viewers. Much later. <laughs> okay, so that's all I want to do here in Romero. But for our next destination, we need to get Bo in front of the party again, because we are going to Agua. And I hope you still have that tablet in your inventory somewhere. There we go. So what I'm going to do here is just meet you at the top of the tower, which is a lot easier to climb now that we have Karn because we can open those locked doors and take a shortcut right to the top. I think it only takes like, I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds to get to the top of this place now. It would help if I had him at the front of the party though to take advantage of that, so be right back. Alright, we made it to the top. See? Wasn't that easy, viewers? Well, I guess we're not at the top of this tower quite yet, but... We've made it to the floor that we've reached previously, so for us it's the top. For all intents and purposes. Oh, nice view. Yeah, I've been using Marble 3s. Here we get a Flame Shield. Now, um, this is a... Uh, it's a mistranslation, and I believe this is fixed in the Game Boy Advance version of the game. But in the original, you're going to see that there are two flame shields. You have one that has meh stats, and then you have this one that increases Ryu's defense by, what, 40 points almost? And I think in the newer translations, the better one is called the Lava Shield or something like that. So yeah, really good piece of equipment for Ryu there. Ah, mystical music. Ha! 
get a secret item, the Icy Dagger. This is the best weapon in the entire game for Karn. Not his strongest weapon. There is one dagger that is a little stronger. Um, but even without that weapon, Karn will be able to deal upwards of 7 to 1,000 damage. So I'm not even worried about acquiring that weapon. Um, but for right now, let's look at the Icy Dagger. His attack goes from 73 to 116. Very nice. And over here, we get the Life Armor. Best armor in the entire game for Ryu. Yeah, I'm breaking the game a little bit here, but whatever. It's, it's how I roll. Defense is 159. Give him the Life Armor. 244. Wow. Ryu is a tank. Added bonus to the life armor is that it regenerates Ryu's HP as he walks around, making it really good, well, for tanks. <laughs> it's just like the magic armor or the Erdrix armor in Dragon Warrior games. Um, and that's one thing this game does, is that it basically just hands you the best items in the entire game. You don't have to go through any long or arduous side quests or dungeons or play any stupid mini games or anything like that and that's how you get Karn's strongest quote-unquote dagger is through a, a mini game and I'll go in over that in more detail when it becomes available to us but as of right now I'm undecided if I'm going to spend the time it takes to acquire that weapon because it's very RNG heavy you have to either get really lucky or spend upwards of one to three hours just hoping you get this weapon. Um, let me know if you guys want me to see that. Again, it's not critical at all. You are totally fine without that weapon. Um, and I know that kind of goes against my completion aside and showing off as much as I can in an LP, but in this case, it is just not worth it at all. But um, I think we're going to call this a video here after picking up those kick-ass items, and we'll be coming back next time. I will meet you outside of Oria, where it's time to finally rescue Ross's daughter, who hopefully is still alive. Or is it time to do more side quests? Hmm. Well, anyways, you'll just have to wait until next time to find out. So until then, as always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you have a good day. Take care.